Hello all the he, she's, gays, they's, and everyone else under the rainbow. Welcome back to the very first episode of the Queer Kitten Caboodle with Cat And Poodle. Thank you for joining us on our very first episode. I hope you've seen the introduction video. We literally just filmed it about 30 minutes ago because it took us that long to stop laughing to film this one. I will have the announcement link down below if y'all just want to, if y'all missed that. Um, we will do a warning. I don't know how long this video will be. And I don't know how long we'll be talking seriously for a little bit. We've been a little silly the last few minutes. So. I.e. we are sober. We're like this all the time. It's fine. We're very pretty. We're two halves of the same idiot. We are. But on today's episode, <clears throat> we just wanted to bring with you guys our own personal journeys with our own sexualities. Yes, we understand everybody's journey is their own. Mm -hmm. Everyone's story is different. And this is just kind of a glimpse into us and growing up as queer in the state of Oklahoma. And like how we've grown from little t children to adults to, we were both drag performers at one point. Point. So the, that had a hand in our own oh, sexualities. Definitely. We are unique individuals in a sense of our own journeys as our own. Mm -hmm. Like every queer person under the rainbow, all of us are uniquely our own. Mm -hmm. Just like I love the saying of everybody's a snowflake. Because not every one person's journey is the exact mm -hmm. same. And because we are only two voices in journeys that span so many different types of people under the queer rainbow. We are wanting to bring in other people, people that we know mostly, who also share different journeys than us so they can give a different perspective than we would be able to because it's not something we we might be able to sympathize or understand, but we won't know exactly kind of how it works and how it goes. Exactly, I like that. All right, so you do wanna start us off with kind of telling us about your journey as a queer in Oklahoma. Yes, I will state, mine may not, when we, when I go over my own journey and she goes over hers, bear with us if the time, if it doesn't, if we bounce from points, because that's how our brains work, yeah. just preference, y'all have been with me long enough that y'all understand my brain. We're, we're both neurospicy. Something Sorry. we realized is if you're queer, you're neurospicy no matter what, at some degree. At least if you're from Oklahoma. At least the ones we know. As we were saying earlier, these are the gays of our lives. Of our lives. <laughs> well, as we can be, like, I will mention, just to start off, preface it, mm -hmm. we have completely different backgrounds oh, yeah. growing up. <laughs> I was raised by a redneck family, and on my dad's side was a very religious family. So I didn't really know terms. I didn't know what a gay person or meant, what the word gay meant until I was probably in, I would say about ninth grade is when I met my first queer person outside of my family. Growing up, I used to say that I had crushes on the Olsen twins. I was so obsessed with all their movies, mm -hmm. all their shows, all their merch. I made sure my mother bought my sister everything mm -hmm. of theirs so that cause I couldn't wear the dresses. But your sister sure could. I wanted to wear the dresses, but I wasn't allowed because I was a boy. Um, but growing up, and then I would say, oh, I want to be Billy from the Power Rangers. Or I want to be Tommy. The, and then slowly I was introduced to a show called Summerland. I think Summerland is kind of where I started to realize a few details that I knew I was slightly different. I always knew I was different on the playgrounds and stuff because mm -hmm. all the boys wanted to go play sports and go, let's go throw a football. Go team. While I'm sitting on the swings with all the girls in the class laughing our butts off. Um, 
in a really tiny town in Oklahoma. Also, to preface it for those who do not know, I did have a handicapped sister too, which also kind of um, influenced how I am the way I am. Mm. Because I see people differently because I saw how she went through her mm. yeah. journey. Um, but that's got nothing to do with this. Sorry. I, well, that's a story for another time. Yeah. But, so, like, on the playgrounds and stuff, I'm over there with the girls. We're all chatting and talking. And when the guys would start talking about, oh, my God, Kenzie is gorgeous. Or, I think I want to, I think I want to go flirt with her, so I'm going to go shove her. And they talked gay like that, too, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't remember how little boys talk, okay? I've been a little too fabulous for too many years. Because he's always like a little girl all the time. I mean, and I'm over there and like the girls are all talking about, hey, Tommy's cute or, mm -hmm. or Clay or I want to get Jared's attention. And they would, the girls would always ask me to go get their attention. There was the go between. Yeah. I was like, you're friends with Amanda, right? Do you think Amanda would like me? And I'm like, Amanda would kick your butt. <laughs> Sorry. But it's like, so I was starting to realize stuff like that. It's when we moved to, we moved from Oklahoma to Arkansas for eighth grade. I get to Arkansas sometimes. For seventh, the second half of seventh grade and the first half of eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to a TV show called Summerland, mm -hmm. which I do believe that timeline works there. I think so, because... I don't remember when Summerland came out. I do remember it was around the time I was discovering who I was. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of tracks because I think how old Jason McCartney is. I think that tracks. We're going to say it tracks, right? And back then, if you don't know what Summerland was, Summerland was this hit TV show where you were either Team Jesse McCartney or Team Zac Efron. And I just wanted both of the guys' attentions. I wanted to be their friends. I wanted to be them. And then deep down, knowing, looking back, I wanted to date them. But at the time, I didn't know what that meant. I was so fascinated mm -hmm. with the shapes of their body, the their haircuts. I was like, ooh, that haircut looks really good on them. Ooh, I love how his eyes look. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember there was this boy. There was this boy, and I don't remember his name. But we did the whole, if you show me yours, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll show you mine. And we touched. And I question why his look different than mine. Mm -hmm. He was uncut. Uncircumcised? uncircumcised? Yes, yeah. uncircumcised. I was like, <laughs> I was trying to remember <laughs> which one's word. which. Yeah. I was trying to remember which one was which. But, and I questioned that. I was like, oh my God, that's funny looking. Mm -hmm. But I was so fascinated. It wasn't like I was making fun of him or anything. Well, his mother caught us. Hey. Yelled, very religious mother. Um, and I remember her telling my mom, and my mom going, "Do you like boys?" And I'm like, "No, never." Again, how they didn't know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there are home videos of me holding up my sister's nightgown, saying it would be a shirt on me, and wearing my mother's high heels. Listen, I was caught singing into a hairbrush once. Uh, oops, I did it again, and doing the entirety of the music video. On my cousin's bed. Then. Listen. <laughs> but sitting there, then we move back to Oklahoma. I'm in Blanchard for second half of eighth grade. And the ninth grade, we moved to Dibble. And I meet my first gay person mm -hmm. outside of the family whose best friend was dating my uncle at the time. Yeah, I forget you have a younger uncle. I was like, Wait. well, no. She was older than him. Oh. She was 22, mm -hmm. dating my uncle. So I get to know him outside of school, stuff like that. He was a senior. Mm -hmm. I was ninth grade. So I started asking him questions. Mm -hmm. And he would ask me questions. He was like, so... If you had a crush on someone, like... When you think of the perfect partner, who's the first person that comes to your mind? 
I said instantly Billy from Power Rangers. And I went, what? <laughs> and then he was like, oh, so I see you like Summerland. Team Jesse McCartney or Zach Efron. I was like, I've got to pick. Why would I pick? Both are amazing. Mm -hmm. Both are perfect. Put them together, you got the perfect person. And that's when I started to realize a few things. And then we got a new transfer student in mm -hmm. by the name of Brent McDonald. I remember him so vividly because the fact that he told everyone he had a tattoo on his butt of the word mom. Did he actually, though? Yes. Of the word mom. Because when he did a handstand. It said wow. It said wow. It was an M on one cheek and an M on the other. I was so fascinated I wanted to see it. But then I started to realize what that meant. So when we moved to Norman, where we both graduated from, I met my very first frenemy. I met Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. Who tried to hit on me. All I said was, you're barking up the wrong tree. At that time, I thought I was bisexual. Um, that, matter of fact, that's the day. I remember that day. The whole school knew. She went and told the whole school I was gay. You know, I don't remember how I found out you were gay. I think I just knew you were gay. I don't know if it was I, like, I saw you walking around. Well, I was like, that boy's gay. Um, I went home. Because I confided a conversation in mm -hmm. with my uncle's ex-girlfriend at the time that I thought I was bisexual. Because I had a thing for Brent. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. She went and told my mother. Don't ever do that. Do, side note, never, ever, ever out somebody. It doesn't matter if you have feel like you have good intentions. If you think it's better for them, you never, ever ever out anybody for any reason any shape any form Continue. i will say if we also throw it back a little bit because mm -hmm. i forgot something in eighth grade mm -hmm. was my first experience with a girl the le okay that's done it didn't go well we're just gonna say that it did not go well and that also kind of made that's yeah. where the first that's where it helped me mm -hmm. but Sitting there in high school, came home, my mother confronted me. Mm. My mother, with what I'm about to say, my mother says never happened. My mother blocked this out of her memory. I came home and we had the biggest fight of our lives. Up until when my sister passed. Mm -hmm. um, she was so hurt. She's like, no, 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 it's a phase, it's a phase, it's a phase, it's a phase, it's a phase. We did not talk for a month straight. Damn. It wasn't until my sister had a seizure and I screamed for my mother that after my sister was okay and stuff like that, me and her had a heart to heart. Mm -hmm. And I told her that, no, I really am gay. Mm -hmm. Flash forward to... Me at the age of 21, meeting my first queer friends. It's safe to say I'm not friends with any of them anymore, but that's beside the point. I met Lawrence. And then, matter of fact, one of Lawrence's friends tried to hook me and Lawrence up. But then I was introduced to drag, mm -hmm. which changed my life. Mm -hmm. To the point where I used to be scared of drag queens. Mm -hmm. But then drag helped me realize more about me. And right before he met Lawrence, even though we graduated high school, like same year, we had a lot of the same friends. We did not become friends until after high school. It was literally a run in with mutual friends and 
then we were like joined at the hip. It was kind of creepy. So we we became friends around the same time that him and Lawrence became, became friends. Yeah. We'll so, and drag, blah, blah, blah. It went its course, mm -hmm. several different names. The, I went from Luna Soleil to being called Luna the Tuna. Mm -hmm. So I got forced to change my name to Katari Corday. Went from that to uh, Miss Tari Novell. Uh, Katari Safari, then Mr. Oh, yeah. Katari Safari. I forgot I got into a really fight with my drag family and I yeah. just wanted to be away from them. And I should have kept Katari Safari because that was a funny. That was a funny. But I didn't want to, I should have just been Atari Safari. Yes. She just dropped the K like mm -hmm. everyone else did when they left the family. Mm -hmm. But neither here nor there. All the drama and stuff. But I will state that drag opened up my eyes to seeing every aspect of a queer person yeah i was introduced okay. to my first trans friends my first non-binary friends mm -hmm. my first everything underneath the rainbow i was introduced to the word words like pansexuality mm -hmm. demisexual and all these other terms and that's how i discovered and androsexual mm -hmm. and to the point like today now that I'm in a healthy relationship, we can have healthy discussions. When you date a bunch of darts and clowns, you can't really... You don't see the red flags. You don't see the the gaslighting. You don't see mm -hmm. all of the things and how they put you down and all your insecurities. When you're in a happy, healthy relationship, you can start asking questions about your own sexuality. Or you don't even have to be in a healthy relationship. It's mm -hmm. like in a healthy place in life mm -hmm. you can start asking your own questions about your own sexuality which is why i lean more to using the word queer to identify myself because i don't feel like the word gay fully encompasses me mm -hmm. because if like sterling was to come out as trans one day i would be with him wholeheartedly mm -hmm. because i love the person not the body mm -hmm. so it's like but i don't view myself as pan or bi because I would never date a, I would never go actively to go seek out a female. So it's like, mm -hmm. um, if, if my rambling's making sense, I hope it is. Um, but I will just say, I'll leave that off with my journey. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm still discovering more about myself every day. I will also press, press this. When I use the word queer for myself, it is me taking back a word mm -hmm. i do understand that in our community queer was used very derogatory in the 70s 80s and 90s and the early 2000s mm -hmm. so our our elders our elder queers or sorry our elder gays we'll just say that um don't particularly care for that word they equivalent to the f word as well mm -hmm. but when I use it, I, I am taking back the word. It is not meant to be offensive or anything. I think queer is one of the most beautiful words out there. In the dictionary, it means happy. Mm -hmm. And I think for the first time in my life, I can use both sides of that definition. So that's why I call myself queer. And that is basically my journey in a nutshell. I may have left off some pieces here and there. I was trying to keep it very PC. <laughs> I, I will say there was a time from the age of 17 through about 25, 26 where I was a sex addict in the sense of be open and honest about it where I slept with people that I thought were ugly that I was not attracted to because of religious trauma, thinking because I deserve, because I was gonna burn in hell, I wanted to give them a reason. Mm. And I felt like I deserved to be treated the way I got treated, which is why I dated so many clowns and Pennywises and yep. stuff. But that we'll probably talk about more in like a mental health kind of episode, mm -hmm. but It'll I didn't, come up in other but that was part of, that is part of my sexual journey. I just wanted to end it with kind of that over here that I am better. 
I know my worth. The favorite, Be better. my favorite quote that I, I heard earlier today was, guess get, being gay is expensive because gays know their worth. And to me, I love that. I love that. It's great. And it, the more we tell ourselves, it'll fight that insecurity within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pass this off to lovely Kat. Thank you. So I definitely feel like my queer journey started later than, than Clint's. I, when I look back on it now, I definitely see signs that I wasn't straight but I feel like I was definitely one of those queer women who, um, what is, what is the term for it? Um, oh, I'll think of it later. Where it's like, I, I would think my appreciation for women was looking at it just as a woman because, and appreciating another woman, not realizing I was like attracted to them. So like a feminism type of thing, like kind of she yeah. is gorgeous. I mean, I'm giving her affirmations. Yes, it's like I think she's great, and it's like it really wasn't until even though I've been out longer than that to the last few years, where I really realized like a lot of these interactions or how I thought about women were actually coming from, and I am attracted to them, not just women are great. Let me, I think women are great. You know, so I would say I did definitely had instances with other girls, even I think from a young age, where we would like kiss in secret maybe, or just different things. But it's kind of like you don't, if, if, if you are questioning, if you are, I would say like pansexual, bisexual, or lesbian, there's something called the lesbian master doc that you need to read. It honestly helped me a lot. It has a lot of good questions on, um, what it's not performative heterotivity, but it's kind of like when a lot of straight people don't think someone of the opposite sex is hot in a straight way. Okay. So noting that there. I do want to add one extra term to go along with mm -hmm. pansexual and bisexual mm -hmm. is omnisexual. Omnisexual, yeah. Mm -hmm. which basically encompasses both mm -hmm. and it's they don't care any of your but if you're if you're questioning if yeah. you are or not or maybe you're just it's like am i bi am i pan am i omni am i am i a lesbian lesbian master doc give it a give it a read it's it opened it opened my eyes okay so i there was a few times in like my late teens early 20s where i was saying okay there's there's this cute girl and maybe I kind of like her and I thought maybe it was like a one-off it wouldn't happen that much and then it w honestly wasn't until me and Clint became really good friends and he started getting into drag and then he would take me to drag shows and I officially knew I wasn't straight the first time I ever saw drag king side note yeah I have taken many a friend mm -hmm. to drag shows for the first time and several of my female friends are now either bi or pan. Yeah, drag Thank kings you, do it, drag kings. Mm -hmm, I saw a drag king and I literally was sitting there. I was just hella confused. And he just looks at me and he's literally like, you're confused now, right? I'm like, yeah. It's all his fault. It's all his fault. You're welcome. So, and it really, and then after that, that's when I'm like, okay, well now I think I'm attracted to women. So I was definitely like, maybe I'm bisexual. I don't think I ever really put a label on it at first because um, I really didn't know myself. Um, I would say even now in my 30s, I consider myself pansexual because it, I am definitely more about hearts, not parts. Um, but I do definitely lean more masculine looking people. Not all the time. Um, but... And I do, I think I have recently figured out that I am demisexual, which is, you know, when you it's kind of, you have to have a either relationship or a connection to the person to be attracted to them in that way. Um, so I'm definitely thinking, you know, it's, I feel like it's not, to kind of make a joke, the LGBT community is not as black and white as it used to, as it used to be. It, it is very, I think a lot of people are feeling like all these kids are wishy-washy nowadays, and we're not. It's like, it's, 
we're exploring more of our sexuality than we've ever been able to because I feel like there were still these small boxes. So, and I, coming out to my parents wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, I grew up, I would say we were religious. Like I grew up Catholic, but we weren't Catholic Catholic because like my mom grew up Catholic. My dad became a Catholic. Side note, gay joke involving Catholics somewhere insert here. Yeah. Continue. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. So, but I, growing up, gay was never a bad thing like i would say i feel like i come i'm one of the lucky ones in that i have two great parents and they're very supportive like he is their second son besides my biological brother and it was never a bad thing i, I remember i have a step uncle who was gay and it was never a big deal i remember one of my dad's oldest friends from when he used to work with him he was a server for a long time his name was vance and he was fabulous and he i think used to do drag in vegas or something i don't know but that man we were always seeing him and we had other friends that were gay it was never a big deal which i think why sometimes i'm so surprised that it took me so long to figure out i was gay because it was never a bad thing in my house i just it took me a long time to figure it out see yours so, was never a bad thing mine was non-existent yeah so it's like I didn't know that this was yeah. an option. Yeah, it's like his was more environmental. Mine was more me, internal, like why it took me so long. I still even remember, like I remember telling my mom, and it's like if, if, if anyone were to know my parents' backgrounds, you would almost think it would be my dad who I would not be nervous to tell because he's the one with the gay stepbrother. And my mom grew up in a really small town, very religious Catholic family. Neither of them are very, are very prejudiced people. They're very open-minded. And I remember I told my mom and it was fine. And I just couldn't get up the nerve to tell my dad. And one day he was just like, hey, I have something to ask you. He's like, you know, are you straight? Are you gay? I was like, do you? I'm just wondering. Cause you know, you've been hanging out with Clint, just going to a lot of gay bars and just things I've heard you say. Like, I was just wondering. He kind of was very nonchalant about it. And I was like, yeah and i was like i don't know why i was scared to tell you and he was like i don't know why you were either it was just very to the point just he was wondering and i don't know why i think it's it's just a thing in me because sometimes you think dads are going to be the ones you know that don't but i have a really cool dad thankfully um so yeah like i i don't i feel like i'm one of the the few in the community that has a good home life with good parents and a good a, not all of them, but a decently good like surrounding family and that support me and accept me for who I am. So it's, but I, I still think seeing other people, other friends and other people I've known in the community who have had the bad experiences makes you think everyone's going to act like that. But yeah, so we definitely have different experiences growing up, different ways how it has shaped how maybe why we've come out or shaped how we come out or how we've acted when it first happened. Yeah, kind of just makes us who we are. But. See, that's like what you were saying about the backgrounds and coming mm -hmm. out. I feel like if I would have had the opportunity to come out to my mother, mm -hmm. I don't think we would have had the conversation we had. Yeah. But the fact that she was told while I was at school, mm -hmm. she had all day to fester with it. Yeah. And even she has stated in the past that it was more of, it wasn't that she was disgusted by it. It was, her first thought was, oh my God, my child's gonna have a horrible life. Cause in her eyes, I do have a gay uncle, who's not biological, who, does have who is HIV positive so in her eyes and how she was raised she and everything was worried you would end up just like him yeah in her eyes every queer person yeah. every gay male ends up with HIV yeah. which is not the case no. my mother's also sh if she remembers mm -hmm. that she's bi <laughs> I think she's one of those bi women that it's bi on her timetable I think you would call it Heteroflexible. There we go. So, but yeah, so that's how it shaped both of us. Yet we yeah. both have such a similar mindset. We're, and to preface this also, our birthdays are two days apart. We're almost a year apart. 
July 20th and July 22nd. 22nd. So. Cancer cusp babies. Cancer cusp babies. Are even though I was born on a full moon, so I am like epitome of a cancer. And you have a few Leo traits. So, it's a little bit. Okay. You're a little bit more headstrong than also, I am. Also, my Leo's in Venus, so listen. You're a little bit more headstrong than I am. And the, 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 this is who I call my, um, my, oh, what's the word? I don't know. She's our hardcore feminist. That is very, or you used to be. I mean, I am. I'm trying to, I was trying to think of a word. You said, the, what's the word? I'm trying to think of a word. I was word. like, I was trying to think of the word, and the other word that came to mind was feminazi, but you're not a femi feminazi, because no, you're not, not that bad. No. But because you I are, believe that trans women are women, so I'm not a feminazi. Okay. She cool. actually is the reason why I am a feminist, and I am very hardcore about protecting female reproductive rights. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we're very weird. Okay, you're gonna get this a lot. Um, you're also gonna get that we'll probably randomly break out into song. Yep, all the time. We have a habit of if somebody says one word of just I'm going. Trying really hard this far not to listen. Okay, it's been difficult. I was like, I was really hard with the whole when you talking lesbian so much. Lesbian. 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 Not, Not Lebanese, Lebanese black, she Punjabi. You're never going to get it, it's fine. If you get it. Comment below. Comment below if you get it. If you get it. It all. has two references. Yep, all in one. In one, I'm just curious. How gay are you? How gay? That's is he your gay test. Or European. Is he gay or European? Mm -hmm. He's gay it. and European. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is what was taking us. But it was it was worse than this. We're we're very toned down now. We got a lot of the silly out. I will say that we are both going to be very open and honest during these videos. Yep. So any questions you guys would like to answer down below within reason because i do know we may get some of those weird yeah and i will say if 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 it, I, I want to preface also if you seem to have talked about something and you feel like we got it wrong for some for some reason again we have our own experiences so if it's if we're talking about something that isn't necessarily an experience close to us we might get it wrong let us know because if we are wrong we want to know mm -hmm. we are definitely not that we're very open-minded people, not that and innocent. we're not. Sorry, <laughs> I so, I tried so hard. You did. Because if if we are wrong about something, or you feel like we're wrong, please let us know. Um, nicely, but you know we are all about righting wrongs, and if it comes off, we said something or referenced something that you let us know. Let us know. But yeah, if you have any questions about anything we said about mm -hmm. our own personal journeys, mm -hmm. if we. Because we kind of both just glossed over it. Yeah. We didn't want to go into full detail because a lot of our journeys and stuff will probably be discussed in... Oh, yeah, definitely. ...with other topics and, and other... And we definitely missed things. I mean, listen, we just kind of went over what was maybe more important in our head. I definitely think we've missed things, but we'll go over them more. Kind of like I went back about the... Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, any questions or anything you have, ask us down below... We are both very open, honest. We're like a book. Open us. We'll answer. Mm -hmm. That is so not the Probably quote. Probably with something raunchy too, but it's okay. I mean, we are smut queens over here. Yeah. Um, we are going to have episodes in the future talking about drag. Yes. And we may do a whole series on different types mm -hmm. of drag and do it where we talk about our own drag journeys um, in a lot more detail. Mm -hmm. As a former drag queen and a former diva or folk queen. Or folk queen, yes. Because I, I view you more as a folk queen than I do I, a It's diva. interchangeable because I feel like, to put, if you know as much about the pageant, like the queer pageant business, it's like sometimes it's called diva, sometimes it's called something else. So, yeah. Yeah, but in my head, you were yeah. more folk I, queen because I, you I, did I said it better. And that's the tea <laughs> with Tati. Sorry, <laughs> with Tari. <laughs> it's the tea with Tari. Oh my god, that would have been a thing. That would have been a thing. Been um, a thing. <laughs> we're getting off topic now.
But yeah, we just wanted to start off, let you know where we're coming mm -hmm. from, both as Okies, um, born and raised. Yes, I lived in Arkansas for a little bit. Doesn't really define me. The only thing Arkansas gave me is I know other states I don't have allergies. I mean, I was born in Texas, but I lived moved when I was two, so I have no Thank God. About it. <laughs> Thank God for that. Which is saying something, because we live in Oklahoma. We are the buckle of the Bible belts, is how we're referenced. So, we will state in future videos, mm -hmm. if we get to talking about religion or politics, because of the topics we'll be talking about, mm -hmm. whether or not it's just, we're talking about books and something political needs to be discussed with that, mm -hmm. or music or something, we are going to be as... PC as possible and not try to put our own opinions and just bring the fact as best as we can. Yeah. We may call something stupid and be very blatantly like this. We're also going to try. I mean, it may end up where we can't keep our opinions to ourselves, but listen, sometimes people are stupid. Yes. So, but I think that's where we're going to end this. Okay. If, is there anything else you would like to add to the topic? No, I think we've kind of covered it for now. I'm definitely looking forward to talking with you guys again. This was fun. Um, I'm hoping you're wanting to see more videos. Uh, comment below what you think the next one should be, because we have so many ideas. I feel like we don't know where to start. So if you kind of, maybe if there's one that a lot of you want to see from us next, let us know. Mm -hmm. I will say we are in the process of thinking about different ways to bring you videos. Mm -hmm. We yep. may do, depending on our schedules and stuff, try to do a live chat mm -hmm. with you guys on a 15th. It may not fall on the 15th for us to be, we may like give you a video of that month mm -hmm. and then... Maybe a shorter video and then do a live on the weekend. Yeah, and like give y'all like, she'll be at her house and I'll be at mine and you guys can come on and ask us questions sure, yeah. of whatever topics. Um, I will say all of our topics, we have so many written down. If, you're, if you want to know more about drag in Oklahoma, we have several video ideas on that. Oh, definitely. Just, and that's just in Oklahoma. I mean, we have so many drag in, drag in general ideas. But When it comes to drag, Oklahoma is never represented in the way that it should be because we are the state with the best of the best of the best. Granted. We're not biased. Granted, I may not like a lot of their attitudes. Yep. But I will say the drag scene in Oklahoma is is really good. We actually have a very good gay scene, like gay bars and a gay strip. So as I feel like, and I will say because it, for we are millennials, but for you know the younger generations, it is not as big of a deal. I think to have to go to just a gay place, but I know for us it was it was a little bit different. Um, it's nice to, you know, it is nice to go some places sometimes and feel it be all-inclusive for everyone who is and is not. But sometimes I think for us having that just gay space makes it feel a little more safe. Because we, we were still coming out when it was, or even just in high school and seeing how other people reacted. Even though they still do today, it was a little bit different and a little bit harder. So kind of having that, for lack of a better term, safe space is a good thing. And Oklahoma has a really good... A really good one that I think is very underappreciated. Very. And I will say, that's another reason why we wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Is we feel like this is our gay space. Where we are able to bring how we... To bring what we love, what mm -hmm. we what keeps us safe yeah. to you guys. We will be doing probably like vlog style things will come up on my on the actual book side of things so that you can see the different places and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't really know how to do vlogs with this topic topic We're yet. We're still learning. We're learning again. Like we said in the announcement video, if you have any equipment or anything, like you guys say, oh, these are the best mics. Mm -hmm. Or you need this type of a backdrop. Or what if you did this? Or what if you did that? Just give us all those thoughts. We're going to, we're going to like, Probably do a lot of research with mm -hmm. a lot of different things and yeah. take all y'all's advice into Bet. consideration. Um, I do know we have a friend who owns a queer store. We're definitely going to be talking about that store a lot because 
It's a great store and they ship internationally. I will have Buy them. all the things from them. Queer Collective will be linked down below mm -hmm. in every video for on this channel. Yes. They do not know this yet, but Sunny and Maddie. Um, we love you. We love you and you're our sponsors without actually giving us money. Yeah. Actually, or, we're just sponsoring you because we love you. But we have tons of ideas for the future, so I'm just going to leave us off here. Like we said, comment all that stuff down below. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, that's about it. That's about it. So Thank you for watching. We appreciate you guys, and we hope you love the first flagship video of the whole kitten caboodle with Cat. And Poodle. <laughs> Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Again, comment everything down below and anything we talk about in most of our videos, if we talk about a business or something, we'll have, a link down we'll have at least Instagrams or Facebooks or something linked down below. Mm -hmm. um, but until next time. Stay gay. Yes, I love that. Oh my God. Yes, stay gay. <laughs> and then when we mean stay gay, stay gorgeous and young. Bye.